So good morning. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to discuss uh, this phase two trial of trastuzumab duroxicin, the Destiny Bresto one study. These are my disclosures. So trastuzumab duroxicin is a novel antibody drug conjugate. It consists of a HER2 specific monoclonal antibody with the same amino acid sequence as trastuzumab. It's conjugated to a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor payload via a peptide-based cleavable linker. Now, trastuzumab duroxicin has several distinctive features. One is that, as I mentioned, its payload is a potent topoisomerase 1 inhibitor. This is a kind of chemotherapy that's not typically used in HER2-positive breast cancer, so it's less likely that cancers will have developed resistance to this agent. Uh, there are about eight of these payload molecules per antibody, and this is a higher drug-to-antibody ratio than is typically seen with current antibody conjugates. And lastly, the payload is membrane permeable. So this, in preclinical studies, it allows it to diffuse out of the targeted cell and kill neighboring tumor cells, regardless of their HER2 expression. This study enrolled patients with centrally confirmed HER2-positive advanced breast cancer. All patients had had prior TDM1. Patients who had significant uh, history of interstitial lung disease were excluded, and patients with stable treated brain metastases were eligible. In part one of the study, which was designed to identify the recommended phase two dose of the drug, uh, patients who had TDM1 resistant advanced cancers were randomized to several, uh, one of several different uh, concentrations of uh, trastuzumab duroxicin. After review of the safety and efficacy of this part, 5.4 milligrams per kilogram was established as the recommended phase two dose, and an additional 130 patients were treated at that dose in part two of the study. A small cohort of four patients who were intolerant of TDM1 uh, also was included at 5.4 milligrams per kilogram. So this presentation will focus on the protocol-specified analysis of all 184 patients treated at the recommended phase two dose. The primary objective was confirmed response rate by central imaging review, uh, and the data cutoff uh, was August 1st, uh, where about 43 percent of patients are still ongoing. So this was a very heavily pretreated population with a median of six prior lines of therapy in the advanced disease setting. All patients had had prior trastuzumab and TDM1, two-thirds had had prior pertuzumab, and the majority had other HER2-directed therapies as well. So now for the efficacy analysis. The primary endpoint of objective response rate by independent review was 60.9 percent. Six percent were complete responses, 54.9 percent were partial responses. The cl clinical benefit rate at six months was 76 percent. The median duration of response was 14.8 months, and the median time to response was 1.6 months, essentially at the time of the first restaging. The disease control rate was 97 percent. There were less than 2 percent of patients who had progressive disease at time of first restaging, and this uniformity of activity of trastuzumab duroxicin is reflected in this waterfall plot shown here. We also looked at how the response uh, varied by subgroup, and as you can see in this forest plot, the uh, activity of trastuzumab duroxicin was relatively consistent across all major subgroups, including those patients who had had prior pertuzumab, where the response rate uh, was about 65 percent. The progression-free survival cap and Meyer curve is shown on the left. The median progression-free survival was 16.4 months. And in the important subgroup uh, of those patients who had had prior brain metastases, the PFS was 18 months. Uh, now I should point out that this was a small subgroup uh, and the confidence intervals are wide. So on the right side is the overall survival. At this data cutoff, the uh, median follow-up was only 11 months, so the data are immature and the median overall survival is not yet reached. Now turning to the safety analysis. So 57 percent of patients had at least one grade three adverse event. Uh, 15 percent of patients discontinued the study drug because of an adverse event, and the most common reason for discontinuation uh, was pneumonitis or interstitial lung disease. So this is a summary of uh, the most common adverse events. Uh, this was similar to what was seen with the phase one study of this agent. Nausea, vomiting, and fatigue were the most common adverse events, but these were all almost, uh, I'm sorry, almost all uh, low grade. Uh, alopecia was seen in 48 percent of patients. Neutropenia was in 35 percent of patients, but febrile neutropenia, uh, which is what's most clinically relevant, uh, was rare, less than 2 percent of patients. 
So because we knew that interstitial lung disease was a risk of trastuzumab deruxtecan from the phase one study, all patients in this study uh, who had evidence of pulmonary toxicity were adjudicated by an independent expert panel. And this panel identified 25 patients, or 13.6 percent of the population, who had interstitial lung disease that was felt to be drug-related. Uh, 20 of the 25 were low grade, but unfortunately four patients had fatal ILD that was felt to be drug-related. Of the total 25 patients who had had ILD of any grade, the median time to onset was 193 days, or about six months after starting study therapy. Of the 20 patients who had grade 2 or higher ILD, so that's symptomatic ILD, uh, 13 of them, uh, so just over half, had received steroids as part of their treatment. In the patients who had non-fatal ILD, seven had recovered, two were in the process of recovering at the time of the data cutoff, and 12 either had unknown outcomes or were not followed until resolution. And of the four fatal cases, the onset ranged from 63 to 148 days after starting study therapy. Three of those patients had received uh, steroids as part of the treatment for ILD, and the deaths occurred between 9 and 60 days after their initial ILD diagnosis. So this expert panel, uh, after looking over these data, their advice was for future studies of uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan that patients be monitored closely for symptoms of ILD and that uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan be held and that steroids started uh, as soon as ILD was suspected. So in conclusion, trastuzumab deruxtecan demonstrated a confirmed response rate of 60.9 percent and durable benefit in a very heavily pretreated population. The median progression-free survival was 16.4 months, and the activity seemed relatively consistent across clinical subgroups. The overall safety profile was consistent with what's previously been reported uh, with trastuzumab deruxtecan, uh, where low-grade GI and hematologic toxicities uh, were most common. Uh, but ILD is uh, confirmed as an important risk of trastuzumab deruxtecan. Uh, it can be severe and requires careful monitoring and prompt intervention. So these data demonstrate the potential of trastuzumab deruxtecan to establish a new standard of care for patients with advanced HER2-positive breast cancer. Uh, there are several phase three studies of this agent underway, uh, both in HER2 overexpressing cancers as well as HER2 uh, low uh, expressing cancers.